meow moment, all you positive heads out there. It's so good to be back with you, as always. If you're new to this podcast, of course, we are super happy to have you here. And we just ask that you bring an open mind and an open heart to your listening experience and to be prepared to explore vantage points that I'm convinced will help shift or solidify your current understanding of the ultimate nature of reality. While listening, you will be exposed to inspiring, empowering, and unifying perspectives that I'm highly confident will yield stellar results in your life if you opt to try them on for size. Also, if you're a longtime P-Head listener, you know I have been diligently working on producing episodes for my new late-night-style, consciousness-elevating video talk show, Optimistic. Well, after a year plus in the making, I am thrilled to announce that we will be releasing Season 1's episodes weekly beginning March 15th, and I'm asking for your help to spread the love and to let your friends and family know about Optimistic when it's released. In exchange for taking a minute to share our episode one teaser video on March 15th, or whenever you're hearing this up through the end of April, we're giving you monthly memberships to not one, but two consciousness expansive online content portals from two of my very favorite teachers and healers that are valued at over $50 a month, as well as entering your name into a drawing to win a free week at the Mystic Manor for a retreat immersion valued at $2,950, where the winner will be chosen in April. Otherwise, if you're interested in hearing more details about the rewards you'll receive for supporting, we'll send you a video that goes into detail when you text the word mystic to the number 22999. You can also go to optimistic.tv to see several other videos, including the Optimistic Show trailer and two videos that discuss the week-long retreat immersion, as well as details of what the Mystic Manor immersion entails and how you can book a week to come stay with us, even if you don't win the raffle. All right, all you positive heads, on this week's Soul Share episode, I'm very excited to have Dr. Nikki Star Noche here with me on the show. Nikki is a power and purpose activator as well as an energy strategist that helps people to achieve their full potential. And uh, I'm excited about the potential of this conversation. Hello, Nikki. Welcome to the show, my friend. Hello. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. I am looking forward to this, as mentioned, and I'm going to start with the same uh, intro question I always start with, and it is this. You're in an elevator. The woman next to you looks over and says, what's your passion? You have 10 floors to answer. What do you say? I would say my passion is to, it's just what I'm doing now, which is to support people in healing and awakening and spirituality and personal development. It is a good, good uh, passion. My, my passion too. <laughs> no yeah, wonder we're talking. <laughs> it's like I spend all my free time like doing things for personal development and supporting others in that too. Yeah. Yeah. I, I always put it, uh, phrase it as we teach best what we most need to learn. So uh, it's always to me a good sign when someone is, ah, yeah, I'm really working on this stuff myself and turning around and sharing is, you know, it's like a instant feedback loop as you sort of grind, you know, ground things in further and further into your own being. Then what I love about, you know, having this, this medium and, and, and creating so much content, you know, sort of freestyle on the fly. I mean, I don't know most of the time what I'm going to talk about, you know, 10 minutes before I do or 30 minutes before I do anyway. So it's great because then it's like, oh, what's bubbled up in my life? You know, what, how, where is my growth edge? What's most alive for me? And uh, I feel like that's a, such a powerful thing for people when you can, you can share in that way and not get caught up on the, the, the guru complex kind of thing that uh, tends, I, I feel like it's a, it's a, pitfall for some people on the path, you know, of, okay, I've learned it all. Now I'm just the teacher. It's like, I think we're all students first and teachers second, you know? Mm -hmm. I totally agree. So if you would share a little bit about your, or a lot of it, whatever feels, you know, uh, appropriate uh, about your backstory. So uh, the listeners can, you know, have some context for who you are and how you got here. Yeah, I think it's important to share that I didn't really come from an obvious spiritual background or really any kind of this world that I'm in now was completely foreign to me. Um, 
I come from, like I was born in New York, raised in New York. Like all my grandparents are immigrants. A lot of their cultures, you know, like the food and certain things came through, but it was only until I was on my path now that things started coming full circle and making sense. Mm -hmm. Well, my parents, like I don't come from a privileged background. Like my parents were 18 when they had me and like we're in the glam rock scene and there was like (laughs) drugs and infidelity and definitely like wild. Was there hair metal involved? Totally. Okay. I saw your hair and I'm like, okay. And another, another version of you could definitely rock some insane, insane Def Leppard tracks. <laughs> exactly. And that's what they did. You know, like my mom had like thigh high leopard boots and stuff. I remember like putting them on. And stuff. So that's great. So yeah, like I, you know, I just kind of was, I feel like I like really wanted to come to the earth, you know, cause I chose, I also chose parents and a family that they weren't maybe so prepared for me to come, you know, mm-hmm. and, um, grew up in New York and I was always drawn to healing and I did really well in school. And I think that that came from coming from a bit of chaos. Like there was a lot of love and there was a lot of people involved in us in our upbringing. Cause my sister is a year and a half younger. So my parents kind of had both of us back to back. And so everyone was involved because they were kids themselves with raising us. And mm-hmm. um, my father went to jail when I was five. And, you know, we were told he was going to work on a boat in Italy or something. You know, they didn't tell us. But I kind of knew what was happening. And then my mom got remarried when I was seven. And I share that because to show, like, we don't have to come from certain kinds of backgrounds to achieve certain things in our lives. Agreed. And and I also feel that it helps to mold us into who we become. So even as a psychology major at NYU, learning that in quote unquote dysfunctional families, which are considered like divorced family or where there's been like some challenges, et cetera, that the first child often is the white, becomes the white collared worker to Mm. make up for the family's dysfunction. So I totally fit that mold very Mm. well. And I, so with that school came easy. I went to NYU and while I was, and then I applied straight into NYU medical school. I got right in school was super easy. I was kind of always at the top of my class involved in all kinds of things, sports, you know, started the girls golf team. It's a fun fact about me in high school. And, and then I, I was like traveling a lot. I discovered travel after my college years, like that summer between college and med school, I did a little bit of a Euro trip with some friends. And I was like, Oh my God, there's like a whole world. Like I was very much in the New York city bubble. And I traveled to the Caribbean and went on cruises with family and stuff, but I never went to like beyond like the you know to europe or anything like that and that's really right. started to awaken my consciousness mm. because i was just seeing other ways of living so then while i was in med school i started doing yoga more for the sake of fitness nothing spiritual like mm-hmm. at all mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's a great it, doorway for so many right i know and it just started to shift my consciousness and then with that came the stillness of wanting to meditate and so my three big teachers that started my spiritual path were travel, yoga, and meditation. Mm. And while I was in med school, I started having thoughts of like, is this what I'm supposed to be doing? Like maybe I'm supposed to be a scuba diving instructor because I was having like oneness experiences while I was like skydiving and scuba diving. And I was just really experiencing life in a much different way than New York City had to offer me. And and it was kind of one of those moments where there was a divine intervention. I was like applying for dermatology residency and they were like 50-50 chance. So you can try now. I had like seven interviews, which is a good amount for the match. And then the way it works is like the computer systems match those who interviews with like the programs and everyone like ranks the order and then it like shuffles it and it puts you all together. And by some strange fluke, the one of the schools I interviewed at had an open spot and then I didn't get a spot. Mm. So it's like the match didn't work or something. <laughs> right. And I was like, oh, it's fine. I'll just do research. But after my intern year at the NYU hospitals and the Bellevue hospitals, I felt a bit burnt out and also a, a bit defeated because I was like, this is it. 
this doesn't feel like I'm not fulfilled. Like I hand over a stack of prescriptions and I don't feel like these people are healed. And what's that about? You know, and I just went on another one way ticket to Europe, traveled all around and ended up in a month long yoga teacher training because I was looking for a month long yoga retreat, but those don't exist. Ah. It was one of those like divine accidents of like, Oh, I'll just do the teacher training. Cause like, I want to do yoga for a month anyway. And it goes somewhere nice. <laughs> Mine like, as well be island. certified. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But who would have known that that was the start of this path that I'm on now? Because when I got back to New York City, I felt like I don't want to reapply. I don't want to do research. I don't want to go back to Western medicine. So I started off doing yoga instruction that turned into life coaching because people started to see that I was changing my life and I was doing health and wellness consulting and ev- and then everything just started to organically flourish. And then I was, you know, and then I got the call. And I was still traveling now, traveling around the world, meeting with different medicine men and shamans. And then they were like, you know, that you have this gift too. Like you're a healer. And I was like, what? You know, and they're <laughs> like, go ask your grandmother. Like you come from a lineage of healers, you know, through your grandmother's line. Because I'm Colombian through my mm, grandmother's okay. line. So then asking my grandmother more about life before she came to the States it became very apparent that like her mother was a healer and then her mother came out of the jungle. Yeah. So it was like they came, it was my grandmother's mother Mm -hmm. or my grandmother's grandmother. One of those two, I'm blanking at the moment, walked out of the jungle and started living in a village. Oh, wow. And so it was very close like that that happened. And, um, yeah, and I remember that I think she married a quote unquote like white man because mm-hmm. like our Colombian line is very mixed. Like there's native and there are like the settlers, you know, right, the ones right, who right. Kind of came and colonized. So that was like very like a big uproar because like she left the, you know, right the tradition to be with like a white man and she tended the fields and like he was inside, you know, because gotcha. they like, grew food and all that stuff, but he had fair skin. So you right. couldn't really be out right. doing that. Uh, good so good excuse, Whitey. That's, that's <laughs> one I've used myself many times. I'm like, those gringos, uh, those gringos. <laughs> I I always say like I catch fire if I'm in the if I'm in the sun too long. So I have super fair skin and yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so it's kind of funny to see like hear of like the history and to feel some nostalgia, like, oh my God, what else don't I know? You know, and then right. to hear like my grandma, even my mom for her too, because you know, she had one image of her grandmother and didn't really know the healer side of her grandmother. Cause when they came to this, like to America, it was the survival. You know, my grandmother was cleaning houses. She wasn't using her empathic gifts with my, you know, what we call the quote unquote awakening or remembering more of who we truly are. It was like the discovery of energy healing gifts and all these different things. And then me having retreats and my mom coming on my retreat and then her healing gifts activating and so it's been really beautiful to witness, like even one of my aunts is an oracle through her dreams and those gifts getting stronger. And one of my cousins, she's really knows how to make different salves and natural products mm-hmm. that are medicinal. And so just to see how it's expressed through the women in my family and with time, it's so as more and more of us awaken, it's awakening in more and more of the women. And that's just, you know, let alone the people I work with, but it's just, it's kind of like an energy that becomes contagious in a way, in a good way, right? you know? And so after my travels, I was like really always feeling a pull to Los Angeles and California, California in general, but Los Angeles was where it was just feeling. And I knew no one when I moved here in 2013, it Mm. was just like life in New York city was no longer doing it for me. I was definitely someone who loved to go to the clubs five nights a week and dance and was in like the whole models and bottles table and going to like top restaurants. And it was like that whole glam scene yeah. thing and that started just feeling so empty. And I was like, what? And this is not in alignment with me anymore. Like I want nature and it was fun for a time in my life. But then I was like looking for something deeper. Yeah. And I realized all of my nights out dancing was 
for dancing. It wasn't really so much about going out because dancing is such a spiritual practice for me now. And like, it all makes sense. Like when I look back. I know so many people that way. It's like, you know, it's, it's just the only reason they'll have anything to do with it. It's all about the experience of dancing and doing so sober, you know, and a lot of the, I, I don't know if you've ever been to, do you go to any of the ecstatic dance, um, events in LA? I go to, um, Kate Sheila's 360 emergence, mm. which she used to be five rhythms. She teaches Wednesday nights and Sunday mornings. And I, I, I go Wednesday nights and you it's should, like my religion. Check like, out I, ecstatic dance, um, on Sundays in LA. Uh, I think they're twice a month and it's such a great, you know, community and it's a sober event and it's during the day on Sunday and they get a different, you know, uh, producer DJ each, each time. And, um, you know, a lot of the same people that are in the transformational, you know, festival scene, um, you know, are there or, or music wise. And it's just, it's so great. The energy is so great when it's like the intention is all about the dance and, Mm -hmm. you know, no substances, no, it's really, really cool. You should definitely check it out. Yeah, I love that. Like sober partying is the best. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, yeah, and then that so it landed me here in, in Los Angeles. And, you know, then I was on a Fox reality show in 2014. And that kind of opened up a new space of being more like a public figure for consciousness and spirituality. Right. And, and then I lived in Laguna Beach at one point. And uh, really me too. Beach. Oh, did you? Yeah. yeah. I'm in LA and now then, and was in Laguna once upon a... Once upon yeah. a time. And then I found Topanga and that brought me mm. back to LA mm-hmm. and I was in Topanga and then I found a spiritual community in Italy and I was. Dom and her? A, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I'm still a part of Dom and her. I was living half time there for three years and love it. And I have a retreat coming up there as well. Um, so I still bring people there and I still go there several times a year and. I'm part of I'm part of the initiatic path there. And so I'd love to have like a meditation group start in LA, you know, that's kind of like a future vision and goal just connected to like, almost like selfish reasons. Like I connect to the people in Italy through zoom, but I'd love to have a group that's in person here. Yeah. And yeah. And so just continuing with the coaching, healing, transformational work and I, I was for a while teaching at a lot, you know, a few different studios in LA and that was really great and having a lot of workshops. And then I got the call to move out to Malibu. And when I did that, I shifted to more online coaching programs and growing social media. And, and now I'm writing a book. And so it's, it's a constant evolution. I feel like the next, evol- I feel like I'll go back to TV and media even stronger as well. And, and then start like speaking tours with the books. Yeah, that's kind of the trajectory I see it going. But now I, you know, I love the coaching programs and group work because people, like you said, like we're all teachers and students. Yep. So in those spaces, I find it can be an even richer experience than people who sometimes just want to do one to one work with me. I'm like, you know, the group work is actually really powerful. Yeah, you know? Rich, you know, here in in Venice, where I'm at, not to, not very far from you, we do. Um, uh, retreats regularly. People, listeners of the show will come and spend a full week here um, at the Mystic Manor, as we call it. Uh, which, by the way, if you guys are just hearing about that, you can check out optimistic.tv and see all about the retreats. We'd love to have you. But um, yeah, so it's that. And it's, I always say, there's no replacing podcasts are great, books are great, you know, t- programming, TV shows, media, all of it's great. It's something about when you get together with a group of people, it's like, um, even I, I don't quite quote the Bible very often, but there's a couple of quotes now that I've, I find myself using regularly. And one is like, um, where there are two or more gathered in my name, I'll be there. Like, you know, and that was supposedly God speaking, uh, you know, in that verse. And it's um, really interesting to think about, you know, and tap into that whole, oh, OK, what is what's being said here? What what's what's being said is essentially hey if there's multiple of us together it creates a field it, it creates an you know especially with where the intention is transformation and it's such a incredible thing to to go into a container where everyone's intention is like okay we want to up level you know work through whatever we're here to work through and level ourselves up and and sort of um take that journey together you know what i mean Exactly, exactly. And that's, that's part of why like I love retreats. Retreats are actually my favorite medium to work with people. Yeah, because you get that concentrated time. Yep. 
And you really have like so many shifts that happen. I mean, they, they happen anyway, but I find that you can really go deep in retreats. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Well, um, so I'm curious, you're, you describe yourself as a power and purpose activator. So what can you explain what that means? What, you know, what does that mean to you? Yeah. So, um, the experience that I've had and that people have had in working with me or even just being in my field is that something awakens within them. Mm -hmm. So there's like an energy, you know, every person we have an aura, we have an energy field around us. Unique signature. Yeah. And so even in my human design, I have this channel that says like, I'm like a mutator, like Mm. in the sense that like when people just, I don't even have to do anything, but if someone just comes into my field, like they will shift. Mm -hmm. And what I've been observing is that when people would come to my classes, my workshops, even like listening to some of my stuff on social media and Instagram and Mm -hmm. reading stuff like that, it touches a part of them inside. And a lot of, most of the time, like their lives change. So it's one of those things of like, beware, yeah. Beware if you're coming in my field because all this stuff that's not in alignment is going to fall away and you get activated to really connect to why are you here on the planet. Yeah. And also there's like this jolt of energy and inspiration to really – that I like to – is synonymous with power. Like mm-hmm. power is activated to then step into that purpose, mm-hmm. whatever it might be. And even people who feel that they're on their purpose – Literally, it gets like up leveled to something that's of greater greater service to the planet. Yeah. So it's been really such a gift to do this work and to have the courage to leave what would have been like the safe, cush life as a medical doctor to now like really reaching so many more people than I probably would have reached if I was just in an office and doing Mm -hmm. that whole thing. Totally. Yeah, I think you touched on an, an important point, and that is, you know, as you do the work yourself and level yourself up and, you know, clear out the, the blockages and, you know, everything is vibrational in nature, right? So if I'm doing the work myself and clearing out, taking out the trash, so to speak, and uh, it, it now I'm resonating in a different frequency, and then if someone comes into that field, it's, you know, we're all communicating with each other, you know, our, our, our fields are, you know, always mingling, co-mingling, you know, and especially when we're in face, face to face, like, you know, we already know, even scientifically, your energy field, you know, they can take pictures of it, it's stretching beyond your physical form. So you're actually, you know, uh, as they say, your your chakras and are are communicating with that person in front of you. They're 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 intertwining and sending information, and so it makes total sense. These ideas, even with you know great spiritual teachers and things, uh, you know that some of them you just in in their presence and something shifts. You know, I had someone on the show a while back talking about the first time they met the Dalai Lama and how something just like totally shifted in them just being around his presence. So I think we all have that ability at some level to, to tap into that. And of course, you know, some, I think souls come in with that as like their Dharma, their Dharma, their path, like, okay, I'm my, this lifetime is all about stepping into the role of helping to shift as many people as possible where someone else it may be, you know, experiencing, you know, pain and suffering more or something else. Right. That, 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 uh, so I think it's really interesting to, um, to understand that phenomenon with anyone who especially is, you know, embodying and appearing to embody and feels like they're embodying what we want to see and experience more of in our own lives. And that's, you know, I always say coming here to the, to the mystic manor for retreats, my aim is for it to be a so bet experience, which is like a transference of energy, whatever this show is represented to you. And it's represented, you know, it's touched a lot of lives like, OK, this the aim is for you to call in more of that and for you to get that transference of energy and be shifted by by being here. And it's been really cool to see that happen time and time again. Yeah, so beautiful. And I totally agree with what you're saying, like depending on like how much karma we've worked out in other lives mm-hmm. depends like this incarnation. So, yeah, some people are working through a lot of karma, which would look like suffering. Right. Um, and then those who have decided to come back to help others. 
Mm -hmm. Um, and I, that's, that's what resonates with me in this life. And that's what my life is, is like in terms of how it's unfolding. That's, that seems like that. Yeah, me too. (laughs) Me too. And I'm with you on that. I feel, you know, fully like this life is uh, all about helping others. And I also believe if you're here, anyone who's here, there's also, we don't miss the opportunity to fine tune our, our rough edges and, and grow. And, you know, and some people have more of those maybe when they embody in 3d than others, you know? Um, but, um, I think, I think if we're here, we're, we're simultaneously growing. And although like, let's say you as an example, your primary purpose forward is, is primarily in the teacher role, let's say, right. But there's still going to be some, from my, my perspective, uh, some level of, of learning and growth. And, uh, that goes for me and, you know, anyone, I believe it's just a matter of like degrees, you know, there may be someone else down the road. It's like, Oh, I'm 95% here to just work out these karmic, you know, ties and lessons. And, and whereas you may be, Oh, I'm here to work out 5% of that sort of stuff and 95% to help people along, you know? Yeah. And, and honestly, like, of course, like working this stuff out is like so crucial. And I like to call it content. Like whatever's happening, I'm like, hell yes, that gives me content for a book. It gives me content for the quotes I create, um, whatever mm-hmm. I might experience at a store or a place yep. or witness in others. It's like yep. all of its content. If things were just like easy yep. peasy, It'd be really boring. It would, yeah, it would be boring. <laughs> and it wouldn't even give me stuff to like share about. Like I almost feel like sometimes I'm used as a vessel. So I'm like, oh, so I can talk about that. Yeah. Yeah, totally, totally. I am with you on that. Before we continue, I'd like to take a moment to tell you about our new sponsor, BetterHelp. As you know, we do everything we possibly can on the show to help people shift their perspectives to help them lead a healthy and happy life. That being said, sometimes we really just need someone to talk to directly that can help us navigate whatever challenge we're going through at that time. And if you're at that point in your life currently, BetterHelp makes this process super convenient by connecting you with a professional counselor in a safe and private environment, either on video, phone, or via text chats. BetterHelp has licensed therapists that specialize in almost any scenario you may be struggling with, such as depression, anxiety, grief, trauma, or relationship issues. And if you don't like the counselor you get assigned for any reason, you can request a new one at any time. Best of all, not only is it a convenient option, it's also affordable. And if you use the code POSITIVEHEAD, it's even more affordable because you get 10% off your first month. So if you're hearing this and you get the feeling that one of BetterHelp's 3,000 licensed therapists could help get you to where you want and deserve to be mentally, head over to betterhelp.com forward slash positive head and be sure to use the discount code positive head, all one word, to get 10% off your first month. So um, now the other thing that uh, jumps out to me is sort of how how you describe yourself as an energy strategist. Um, Can you, uh, you know, expound on that, what that means? Yeah. So, um, so a lot of the work I do is like, guess how you would say I'm different from other coaches or healers, et cetera, is a lot of my work is based on getting your energy quote unquote, right. Mm -hmm. So when your energy is in alignment and flowing everything, because everything is energy, money, clients, love, work, everything. Yep. So what we're experiencing in our external world is simply a reflection of what's happening to our energy. So a lot of my work is focused on supporting people and clearing the blocks and the things that are blocking their energy and raising their vibration to be in alignment with that, that they're calling in, which is why like goals are so important, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Because when I have clients set goals, then it allows us to look at what's not in alignment with those goals and what needs to shift to be in alignment with them. Right. And so I work in the foundation of energy. Mm. Yeah, I think um, I, I often will say the only job that any of us have is to um, learn how to 
um, balance and, you know, transmute and manage our own energetic offerings to the world because everything is stemming from that. You know, there is no out there out there. So running around, you know, like a chicken with your head cut off, you know, trying to move this and shift this and do that. Yeah, there's a time and place to do things in physical reality. But the precursor to that is where are you at energetically? (laughs) And it's all stemming from that. You know, if you want to know what you'll sort of see tomorrow, uh, let's say, look at how you're feeling today and where you're what, where you're resonating at, where you're vibrating at. And not meaning that literally like, oh, it's always a day lag. Just there's lag in 3D in general. So that's where I think a lot of people miss the the mark with not seeing the correlation between what they're receiving in their life and what uh, what's showing up and the energetic offering that they previously made. And, and it's like they're not tying those two things together as, as, cl- as clearly as they, they could be if it were like instantly happening, right? Oh, I thought or did this and this thing instantly reacted. And it's like, oh, hold on, I see the correlation, right? When there's a lag that throws a little twist on it. And so w- what I also believe as we continue to level up and sort of ascend uh, individually and collectively, the, the lag between you know, our energetic offerings and those reflections are, you know, that gap is closing which is more in alignment with how I, th- I believe it is, um, it, it happens on the other side, right? In non-physical, where it's like instant manifestation, instant thought, you know. Um, so, yeah, that's sort of my, my perspective on how that stuff works and, and why we're seeing a, a quickening in, in, you know, the feedback from our energetic offerings. Yeah. And then even in response to that, that's why it's so important to be careful about what we're thinking and what we're putting out into the field, because like, what if everything you thought manifested? Yeah. What if everything you said manifested? Which it is. Yep. Um, it's just the the lag time. So yeah, that's why something can take a long time to actually manifest because there's doubt in the mix. There's this, that. One minute you're believing it, one minute you're not. So it's like this static interruption that happens. So. So yeah, it's, and that's why it's so important to really like self-awareness is so key. So when there's the witness of what is what I'm thinking serving, am I aware of the automatic thoughts? Am I clearing them? Am I choosing to rewrite them with new ones? And right. Yeah. So just wanted to bring everyone's awareness to their thoughts for a minute <laughs> yeah yeah i think of the um i don't know if you've seen the, the movie from the 80s ghostbusters the the where everything that they think will come you know you know manifest instantly and the guy's like trying not to think trying to think and then all of a sudden there's a giant the state puff marshmallow man and he's like like godzilla sized walking in the streets he's like oh no i thought of it you know and <laughs> he's like this huge marshmallow man so i, I always think of that um <laughs> really as, yeah yeah we don't you know i i think it's it's important i think you know the way i look at it is as we're here, we're sort of getting our training wheels as as many creators, d- you know, divine beings playing in a in sort of a safe environment to a certain degree. And as things as things ramp up and we ascend, it gets you know the stakes get higher, the lag time is quicker. So you have to be sort of you have to pass certain levels to get get there because you know if I was in an arena where instantly whatever I thought about instantly manifested and I slipped one moment and thought something really foul that I wouldn't want and then boom I just had myself you know um, spontaneously combust or something right (laughs) to go back to what I said earlier about the sun so um, it's you know I think there's sort of a it's it's kind of like throwing all of your energy into a crock pot uh, the way it, it works now and so I may have a an off day where I'm feeling, you know, really off and being a pessimist. And so I'm throwing that into the the vibrational crock pot uh, or, you know, but then the next day I really course correct and I'm, you know, replacing those, uh, those prior energetic offerings. So, okay, that's getting mixed into the stew. And then it becomes like when there reaches a tipping point of sorts, uh, the dominant energy is what sort of 
wins out or it becomes a, a, a hybridization of your offerings as well. So that's why I think so many of us get mixed results, right? Because we're constantly offering mixed vibrations. And so we say, oh, wow, I just got, you know, uh, a bunch of abundance flowed in. I was thinking abundantly, but I was also then moved into scarcity. Okay, I'll, I'll, hold on. Scarcity is now coming, you know? And it's like this this ebb and flow and, and you get a mixed mixed results based off of mixed offerings. I think that's a lot of what keeps people sort of confused and maybe a little stagnant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. I totally agree with that. It is a maintenance of our energy. So that's connected back to being the energy strategist of where it's like really giving people the tools and the techniques and the rituals and all the different invocations and things to support them and keeping their energy high. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you, you touching on the, the idea of ritual. I think that's uh, a really important point. It's why those things are so powerful and important. Just, you know, and it can be a ritual that is like, you know, thousands of years old, or it could be one you just made up. You know, it's it's all about what's what's important in it is the fact that you're giving your energy to it. You know, as Bashar refers to it, a permission slip. Okay, if I do this and this on the full moon and, you know, sit here and meditate and write down my intentions and then burn them in the fire and then release them into, you know, whatever that ritual is, you're giving all this energy to the, what, what it symbolizes and stands for to you, which is really the, the, the juju. You know, that's where the, the power is. And so it's, um, they're great permission slips. I believe, you know, rituals are so, so great as permission slips to help us, um, you know, focus and channel our energy. Yes. Yeah. And then we're also calling upon divine forces and other energies to support our energy field. Mm -hmm. So it's like you're calling on a posse of right. other unseen realms right. that most of the time when people are in 3D form, they're not really thinking about the divine and the energies that exist beyond the visible 3D yeah. form. Yeah, that's that's a great point too. It's like It's like you have all access to all these you know, uh, these unseen forces, if you will. And it's sort of like, you know, having something in your, you know, I don't know, in your closet that could really help you to build whatever you're building. And you're just leaving all those tools in the closet and you're not calling on them. And exactly. so mm -hmm. I think that's a great, great point as well. Um, you know, and it, yeah, I think that that's an, ends up being what separates like how the work that I do is like a little bit different from typical coaching and not even being sure sometimes what yeah, to call it. <laughs> right. Because it, it's a lot of it is touching upon the, those mm. spaces. The I'd love ones. to hear a little bit more, maybe some examples of what that looks like for you when you do that. Yeah. So in my programs, um, there is, like I mentioned, so there's prayers and rituals that I create for people. And um, in the time of the sessions, I do light language and certain kinds of light energy activations and visualizations where it's like using energy work to call in certain frequencies and then also use certain types of vibrations and sounds to remove certain energies from people's fields and then imprint new and different ones. So those, you know, those are three ways in and of itself um, that we're working with the unseen realm to support the realization of the goals and the transformation of the person. Mm, yeah. So light language is an interesting one. I've had a few people on the show over the years who um, will channel a light language, if you will. And even on, on my new show, Optimistic, that's about to come out um, as well. I have someone on one of the first episodes um, doing that. And so I, yeah, I'm curious for you, what your, pro your process is like, is it like, um, is it something where you, you know, sort of go into a trance like state and it comes through or is it like, you know, I know it's a little, little different for, for everyone uh, that I've talked to anyway. So I'm just curious when that started for you and you know, what is that process is like? It started for me um, back in 2013, um, where I was hearing it in certain spaces and places. And, and then I started actually channeling it through my mouth and like words and sound in 2015. Mm. And 
And after I started speaking it, it started becoming more and more like spontaneous. Like it could be in response to the energy of the mm-hmm. space. Like, especially if I go into like a temple or certain kinds of places where energy is mm-hmm. strong, it's like that flow of energy comes mm. through. The, it's almost like an interpretation of the energy in the space, for example. Um, when it comes to working with people and on people, <clears throat> it can be really connected to their energy and what they're mm-hmm. needing. Um, and like I oftentimes do feel like energy is present and it's like a translation of what those energies are working in the field doing. Mm-hmm. So sometimes they can feel like off planetary, they can feel other dimensional, they can feel ancestral mm. in terms of like the different groups. So I'm basically translating a group of benevolent beings and sending a transmission is my experience of it. Interesting. Interesting. So are you able to translate what is coming through for you in those cases or? Oftentimes, yes. Oftentimes, yes. Like even for my, I have a women's program and Monday there was an, even before the call, I don't always channel in all of my Q and A calls, but in that one, it's as I was just prepping the space, it started coming through and it was like, oh, okay, they want, there, you know, these there's beings that are present that want to offer a transmission for these women. And it was so funny. Um, there were two different ones. One was like, it was like a clearing frequency and it was clearing it. And it was, it was the translation was so strong. Like, it's not always that I speak English. I oftentimes am just bringing the vibrations through, but it was so strong that they wanted me to translate what was happening. So then, and that was like, it was actually what my quote on Instagram is today. It was connected to like how humans are such funny creatures that they're holding on to things that are not serving them when there's a whole array buffet of things just waiting to come in and just waiting for that space so they can come in. And it was, so that was kind of like the first part was like this clearing. And then the second one was very like this lighthearted. And I actually started laughing hysterically. And it was like the remind, and I was like thanking the women that I got to experience that because like I obviously experienced whatever comes through too. It was so joyful. And it was like this reminder of like, we're here to have like a joyful, pleasurable experience. And we can choose that. Like it can really be lightness of being. And it's a way of being that's a choice, like a conscious choice. Right. Um, and it just really lightened the space so much. And, you know, even one of the women shared like what she was seeing and yeah. And so it's just beautiful because they're also kind of like, sometimes they're comical, like they're funny and it's like a beautiful <laughs> extension of our human experience to, to be able, like I, I'm, I'm really so honored that I have been given this gift. Yeah, it's um, it seems like there is more and more people that are opening to these sorts of gifts too. It's like the amount of people that I know that channel uh, in one form or another is, you know, ever growing. And it seems like this is like a, a, a part of the um, consciousness expansion and ascension that's happening on the planet. Yeah, because essentially what happens is we go through a spiritual awakening and we do our healing work, we're unclogging our energy channels, our, our meridians, and we're opening to greater sensitivity, which then allows us to perceive not only, like if we were very dense, then it's like we only perceive what's visible in the 3D space. And the more we open our channels, our hearts, our minds, we become more sensitive to energies that are present in all forms, including people, then we have like this other layer of perception that opens. So it's like almost like unclogging, like even like the healthier one eats, I feel they can, like you can access this in all different realms. And I feel like to be a clear channel, it's important that your body is clean too, because that is the physical channel. So people could be like super quote unquote spiritual, but if they're not eating yeah. well, like this would block these capacities yeah. from expressing. So the more pristine we get with our energy, how we spend our time, our thoughts. Also, because if you have certain kinds of thought forms, 
be, benevolent loving beings are not going to choose to channel through you because ego can get in the way. And of course, as humans, we all have some level of ego for sure. But the purer you become in your intentions and your way of being, the more likely you will be quote unquote chosen right. because you can be trusted. Right. Yeah, that, that makes total sense. And I think for a lot of people, that's a big stop off point on their own, their spiritual journey. You know, the way I see it is, well, it's all, we're all one, of course, and uh, is the, the consensus for most people on this path, you know, and it's, it's, it's a, you know, um, I guess depends on the perspective you're speaking from, you know, at some point, at some level, you and I are separate at another level, you and I are one. It's, you know, relative truths, if you will. But uh, I, I believe one of the stopping points for most people on their journey is dealing with this sort of, uh, you know, uh, I call it like the Jesus complex <laughs> or the uh, I'm the one it's because everyone is the one. And so as you sort of, um, you know, expand and ascend and awaken, it's like it can be it can be almost like a pitfall. I feel like it's almost like I'll write a passage for someone to, to, to go through. And yes, you are the one that's correct. And so is every other reflection that you see <laughs> so you are the most special you're as special as anyone ever has been and is unspecial as anyone ever has been simultaneously um if you will yeah i like to say like you are the chosen one if you allow yourself mm. to be chosen and that's going to be decided based on your actions and how you spend your time and how the karma that you're creating in this life because everything is your choice and no one, again, you decide everything that happens. So if you're going to choose like that vice versus going to do something for your self care, like you're allowing, you know, it's whatever you're deciding, you're, you're deciding your destiny. Yeah. We had a discussion about this last night, you know, this whole idea of free will and, and predeterminism and how, you know, ultimately I, I think both are true in the sense that you know, my, my friend Chris described it as two circles, like, you know, predeterminism is like the outer circle and free will is within it. It's like, you know, you have all these potentialities, but they, and they've all happened. They're all happening simultaneously. So from one perspective, it's, you know, it's all already happened. Right. And from another, you're choosing which version of it all that you want to experience this time. Um, which is why I always say our, our lives, I believe play out at the corner of free will and destiny. Right. And it's all, yeah. I say like fate is free will plus destiny together. Yeah. And so it's yeah. like an equation. Yeah, I like that. So you have the potentials in yep. your destiny, but it's your choice that's going to decide it. It's like same with what we were just sharing about. Like you can be and do, you can, you can be Jesus. You could be whoever you want to be. You could be the president. You could be a millionaire. It's all about how you're choosing to show up in the world and what you're choosing to do with your time. And Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I love good stories of synchronicity or serendipity or positive paranormal stories. And as someone who's channeling light language, and uh, I'm, I'm assuming you've got many interesting stories up your sleeve. Um, is there anything that comes to mind that you'd care to share? I do have so many. I feel like every day mm -hmm. is kind of like that. But the one that feels called to really mm -hmm. share um, is the one connected to how I found Dominher, which is the spiritual community in yep. Italy, because it is um, it is a place that many people get called yeah. to go and weird synchronicities happen to get there. Um, and of course, if anyone's interested in going, like I'm glad to connect with you and help make that happen for you. And what I've observed is, um, so how it happened was like, I was doing a cleanse around New Year's 2016 with my friend who's a naturopath mm -hmm. in Ojai. And she said like, okay, plan your year out. Like, what do you want to do this year? So it's, you know, just tapping in and feeling into like, you know, projecting into the future and saying this, that, and the other. And I kept seeing like, like ar around like August, I couldn't really see after August. I was like, I'm having a hard time. I didn't know why I can't like feel like what's going to happen. And I kind of feel like that in my life now, actually. Um, Cause usually there's like these events that we can't fathom, mm -hmm. you know? 
Um, and so she said, okay, well, tell me so far what you have. And I said, okay, I have this, this, you know, and I do want to go to, to Columbia with my grandparents at some point. I'm thinking maybe July for my birthday. And, and I was like, and I'm going to Italy What's for your a birthday? wedding in May. And I'd love July 20th. Okay. I'm always curious because I'm in July. Okay. Go ahead. Um, yeah. <laughs> and then, um, so then I was like, okay. I was like, well, I'm going to this wedding in Italy in May and I'd love to pair it with something. I don't want to just, it was like a three day wedding and I didn't want to just go for that. And she was like, ah, well you should go to Dom and her. And I was like, what's that? And she was like, well, you were on this reality show. So I feel like you would be, it was, and I was on a reality show about creating a new society. And she's like, basically they created a new society. It's like a community that's also a society that's also a spiritual path. So I was like, let me look it up. I like look up the Google thing and I see like, past life research school for spiritual healers. And I was like, Oh my God, this is my place. And there was like this beautiful stained glass window of like a goddess. And I was mm. just like, Oh my God. Yeah. I'm totally going. <laughs> Look it up. I like, I like go and, and I have like a five day experience there. And I left it being like, okay. And I went into the temple and I felt like, Oh my gosh, like this, like my light language, like it was like wanting to pour out of my mouth, but I was on a tour with other people. So I was literally like putting my hands over my mouth. So like, wow, <laughs> it was like so strong. And I was like, whoa, this place is powerful, you know? And so I left knowing I would come back at some point. And then here's where the fun synchronicity stuff starts to happen, where I tell my family about it. I go back to New York and I like was visiting them before I went to Columbia. And I was like, oh yeah, I found this place. It's really cool. They look it up and they're like, Nick, that's your place. Like, it's like exactly like what you are, you know, like mm -hmm. why don't, and then they found this program that they used to have called new life where you could live there for three months to see if it's for you. Mm -hmm. They're like, yeah, they have like a new life starting in August. You should apply and do the interview. And I'm like, I don't have time for that. I was like, I have three retreats coming up. I don't have like money just like save that I could take three months off right, right. and not receive any money at that time, you know? And my parents have been very much like, I've been independent more or less since I was like 16. Like I bought my own car and like whatever. And so they were, they like, you're never like out to hand me cash. And they're like, we'll give you a thousand dollars if you go. And I was oh, like, wow. what? Like, <laughs> so they're like, just have the interview. If you get accepted, like we'll figure it out, you know? And I was like, this is weird. Like, and these are coming from when I left Western medicine, like my, and this, I'm talking about my stepdad too. He, you know, he was doing his best. He just said like, whatever you're doing is weird. Even if you're successful, it's weird, you know, but then they eventually got on board when they saw like how I was helping to transform people's lives. And here they are like supporting me to do something even weirder, quote unquote weird, you know, like go to a spiritual community in Italy. Right. Well, it's like, what? Like, this is so strange. So then like I talked to the woman, I have the interview with her and she was like, yeah, we're pretty much full for August, but I can make a spot for you if you want to come. And oh, I was wow. like, um, okay. I was like, let me just see. And so basically, I, I, like I said, I had like retreats coming up. Then one send actually was at the Ojai Foundation, one of them. They called me and they said, oh, we have to cancel your retreat because the founder, like the board is having a, a meeting that weekend and they want to use, the, you know, they're, they're going to be using the space. And I, they're like, sorry, we have to cancel it. So I'm like, okay, that was out of my control. Boom, space opened up. Then another one, um, they, it was with this company. And I think there was like a certain number that they needed by a certain date in order to have it. And I think we were like one or two people underneath that number. And they were like, yeah, we're not going to have the retreat. There's not like, we, you know, we want 10 and we only have eight, whatever. And I was like, okay, I wasn't arguing about it. And then the last retreat was with one of my friends who always wanted to go to Dom and her. And we were collaborating. And she was like, girl, if you have the opportunity to go, like go to Dom and her. We can have a retreat another time. Yeah. And so my whole schedule opened up. So wow. then I was like, okay, what about finances? So my, then my parents were like, yeah, sure. Like we'll give you the thousand dollars, like see what else happens. So then I was telling a friend who's also a healer and he was like, you have to tell your community that this is what you want to do. You've been like supporting yourself through all your transition, ask for help. And I was like, this, that's embarrassing. Yeah. It's not like I'm sick that I'm going to have a crowdfunder to yeah, like, right. I was like, who am I to do that? Like what? And he was like, well, if you do it, I'll give you money. Mm. And I was like, what? You know? Wow. 
And so then I ended up creating it and I had one client give me a thousand dollars. I had the couple who had the wedding in Italy give me a thousand dollars. I had, I ended up getting all the money and more than I needed for that three months that I was wow. able to take courses even because like I had extra money to take courses while I was there. And it was like this beautiful thing that the universe was like, you need to go here. Like you wow. need this for your initiation, your becoming. And I've learned so it opened up like a whole other realm that really connected the dots for me to understand more who I was, even from like a past life perspective, mm. my mission in this life, meeting like a whole other community that is similar to what we're saying of like dedicating our lives in service for the awakening of humanity and the healing of our planet. Yeah. Like that's what this, and it, so it was just like a beautiful reminder of like how supported we really are and that things happen in divine time in the yes. most perfect way. And yeah. so, yeah, it just felt really like a big blessing to have that happen and, and all the synchronicities that align to make that happen. Very cool. Yeah. I've, yeah. um, I, I've heard some such cool things about Dom and her and like, I know there's some tie, some Atlantis tie in. Exactly. Some, so I was very much feeling my Atlantis stuff that came through, I think in like 2014, 15, where like, just that word was like, oh, die, totally live. Like, you know, I, I just knew it like in my being. But other things like, you know, when people say certain planets, I'm like, no, no, I haven't lived on that planet. But certain yeah. ones I like know I lived on those planets, you know, and it, like Atlantis was the same. And even having like a certain vision of like what I looked like, even one life in Atlantis, one night life in Atlantis, I was like sword fighter, like a female warrior. Oh, sword wow. fighter. And then like another one was like, I, I felt like I was one of the hybrids. Like they were doing interesting experiments with like human animal hybrids. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, like I was kind of like this other species and I had like green reptilian skin. It was really interesting. Wow. Um, so I was like having these visions before. And then when I found out that Dom and her is rooted in Atlantis and a lot of the knowledge comes from there, it felt like even more of like, yes. And there's been so many times I've been there, even now after being in the community, like three, four years that I discover new things. And, and my soul's like, oh, I found you. Like there's things there that like were very much needed for this life that like I wouldn't, you know, it's just crazy actually. Yeah. yeah. But like never see, it amazes me, but it shouldn't amaze me because that's how beautiful this life is. It's so synchronic and it's so guided. As long as we show up and participate and do our part and like use our free will, then it's like unfolds like cake. Like you just sit back and it's like amazing at what happens. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I, I had um, heard that the founder of Dom and Her supposedly, like there's a big mural there from Atlantis that is made or something. Is that correct? Like, is, is there some big mural that's all and it's supposedly like an Atlantean image, if you will, from their own experiences, you know, um, recalling or traveling to, you know, Ashley or remote viewing uh, Atlantis. Um, so there's a series of paintings uh -huh. that were made that come from Atlantis. I, I don't, can't remember how many there are, but maybe there's, there's more than 10, maybe between 10 and 20. I think there, I think I remember seeing like 13 of them. So it's not so much a mural as it is like actual paintings gotcha. of different scenes of Atlantis. Wow. Of when, Yes, people had traveled there. Yeah, and with your your recollection of these other lives, for you, does it come, how does that information come? Like, you know, is it a vision? Is it during meditation? Is it in the sleep state? Is it, you know? What? So it's all different, all of the above. Mm -hmm. um, I, even when I my travels around the world were awakening past lives. Like when I would go to certain sacred sites, it would be like, flash vision there would be like physiologic things that were happening mm -hmm. in the space that were like what is this and yeah. it was like so yes i've been shown there's also been audio recognition so like when someone like when for example the first time i ever heard the word atlantis that was like i just needed the word and it like opened up a whole channel of like information that came in wow so and that's why like i feel that geographical places on the planet serve as igniters and activators yeah. of remembrance. 
same thing with same thing with the light language because a lot of the light language that comes through is ancient languages so that also brings back memories um yes in meditations yes in dreams and sometimes just randomly like i might just be sitting or even when i meet people because i remember the past life i was in with them yeah. and i have the flash but sometimes it's been funny where i was like is this a past life or a future life yeah so even now being able to tap into the future too Mm. And really interesting. Yeah. Wow. So are you getting a lot of future life recall? In these like more recent times? Yeah. Like there's been a lot of like future life stuff with certain people. And it's been interesting because it's been a lot of times with people who are like not using their free will to live their potential. Mm. And there could be like something to activate in this life, but then they're not choosing that. So then I have like this vision. I'm like, yeah, but we were doing it. But then I'm like, oh no, no, we weren't doing it yet. It's like for the future. Right. Wow. So it's like, so sometimes it's true. Like we can relax a little bit like, oh, well, if I miss the appointment in this life, there's always the next one. Yes. And I do think that there is a crunch time that the earth is facing and based on the free will of the humans, like, we could really like extinct our species and other planets have blown themselves up, you know? And so it's like, with like who, you know, like we're in a very crucial time. I'm optimistic. I do feel that the change that humanity needs is happening and it's all perfect and divine. And it's like, it's happening on time. Mm-hmm. And we do need more people on board, like to really have these changes because the extinction of species is still happening at a really high rate. So this is a sign. Yeah, I believe um, it all happens and we get to choose individually which version of reality we step into with our vibrational offering. So from this moment forward, all kinds of things happen. Like which one am I going to step into is sort of, you know, personal to my own energetic offering. And so it's, you know, yes, it makes total sense. Part of that energetic offering is, oh, how do I help? you know, expand consciousness for for quote unquote others and, um, you know, help uh, do whatever I can to, you know, support initiatives to clean the planet and heal the planet and all of those things and stop the extinction that's happening of species. And, you know, someone else maybe at this exact moment should be, you know, very pessimistic, right? And they're, we're like ships passing in the night. They sort of step into a timeline where things go much different, you know, 10 years from now, let's say. Right. And so that's sort of my, my own view on how it, how it plays out, which really empowers us to know that we're, we, we are navigating, you know, potentialities and it all starts within. Mm. Yeah. I think I always like to be aware of moments where people can have an excuse to sit back or something. Mm Mm-hmm. No, so, I definitely wouldn't yeah. say that. It's because it's all, it's actually the opposite. It's like if I sit back and say, oh, I'm just going to, you know, uh, float into the best and highest outcome, you know, it's, we always get out energetically what we put in. So mm-hmm. it's, it's crucial for me to actually do everything I can to navigate myself vibrationally into the highest possible timeline. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's different theories on timelines. In Dom and her, we we believe something a little bit different um, that there are shared timelines and it is a co-creation. Um, so, so yeah, I'm more in the camp of like we have there's multiple potential timelines, and which is the one that's going to strengthen is based on the critical mass of those who get on board. I, I agree with that too. It's it's like it's yes and you know it's like yeah. is it is it free will or is it determinism? Yes. Are you and I separate or are we one? Yes. (laughs) What vantage point are you speaking from? It's a relative truth. So that that is, you know, you're absolutely right. There is a perspective where it is 111 percent all about us pulling together collectively as well. You know, and so. Yeah, it's the funny thing about spiritual talk. Well, it's everything really because science, too, of like there's like a rabbit hole we can go down to prove every point in spirituality. Yep. And then same with science. Now there's a study to prove every case. Yeah, right, right, right. You know, it's like there's a study for everything and there's like a theory for everything. Yeah. And, you know, I I believe it comes back to in the end, it's like I just saw a quote from Abraham Hicks saying, you're making it all up. That's what creation (laughs) is. 
You're making it all up. That's what creation is. So you are literally in the rawest form creation. And mm-hmm. if, if this is how it works, abracadabra, meaning I create as I speak, right? I'm casting a spell. And um, it's, uh, it's just so empowering to know how much power lies in your perspective. Yeah, totally. I totally agree. It's really amazing. And it's really awesome to like, you know, I'm just like sitting here smiling and laughing, looking at the (laughs) ocean. Because (laughs) this is all just like a divine comedy, you know? It really is. That's why like even that message that came through Monday night for the the women's group was just like, keep it light, like keep it joyful, Mm -hmm. like have fun. You know, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. even in that, and I know because that's like part of my medicine, like in the seriousness and being of service, it's like, all right, lighten up a little, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, it, it is yeah. absolutely. I think that is the key. The My favorite Bible verse that I would quote is, lest you become like a child, you can't enter the kingdom of heaven. And so <laughs> it's that is the key to everything that in, you know, lighten up, get enlightened right? It's meant to be (laughs) joyous. It's meant to be fun. It's meant to be a celebration. It's why I always say my aim is to be the poster adult for childhood. Like all of the seriousness is what that's heavy, you know, it's dense. And, um, that, that lighthearted childlike wonder is where all the magic can flow in. Yeah. When we laugh, our heart opens. And also when we look from like an energy perspective, like it's a, our heart literally like opens when we laugh. And then they also think of like all the Buddha statues, like they're all smiling. A lot of them are laughing, you yep, know? Yep. Yeah, so. absolutely. I, I point that out with a, there's a Buddha statue. And it's like, what is he snickering at? I think he's, he's got like this kind of like mischievous grin. It's like, oh, I, 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 I'm seeing, seeing it all. And it's, it's, it's totally laughable in the best way. Yeah, yeah it's true. Oh, this has been so amazing. I do, you know, as we kind of wind down, I'm curious what, you know, what, what is next for you? What is uh, most, what's most alive for you right now? Right now, book writing. I'm writing a book about the new paradigm and it's going to touch on kind of like a lot of things we talked about today and even more like the intelligence of nature and the interconnectedness of things and just earth is this organism that we're living on and spiritual awakening and what's to come, like kind of a vision and hope for humanity. Mm-hmm. And um, so that feels really good and ripe in my sphere. Um, and I'm looking forward to getting that up and out. And I actually proposed it to a publishing house yesterday. And he was like, keep in touch. Like it, it was really, po- I've really received a lot of positive feedback from that. So I'm really excited to get that up and out. And I have like 10 books in the pipeline. So right now, Me that's too. What I, well, maybe yeah. a few, maybe not 10, but a few. Yeah. Yeah. I did like a mind meister and I like mapped out my life. And if I, you know, and if I wrote, could write all the books, it's like, I mean, there might even have been 12 actually, but like for sure there's like 10. And I was like, that really feels good. Cause I feel like books are a very, is there easy for people to no matter where people live or their income or whatever, it's a way to like spread consciousness in a way that, you know, more for the masses. And that's, that's kind of where I feel being called to is really to reach on a more massive scale. Like I was doing the one to work for time for time and teaching the classes and moving to the group program. So it's getting more of like more inclusive. Mm-hmm. So now it feels like going more to the masses mm-hmm. is what's feeling exciting to me. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. What is the best way for people who want to connect and follow your work to do so? Yeah, so um, you can follow uh, me on Instagram. That's usually the most up to date of all my social media accounts. It's at Dr. Nikki Star, D R N I K K I S T A R R. My website is drnickystar.com. And we're going to also include a link to enter your email. You can stay in touch with me to get on my newsletter. And with that, you get a free meditation. So, so yeah, those are the three ways I recommend to stay connected with me. Beautiful, beautiful. I do have one final question for you as we wind down here. And the question is this. In 60 seconds or less, what is the meaning of life according to Dr. Nikki? 
to, according to me, the meaning of life is love, to love, to be loved, to share our love, and that comes through in our purpose. And, and that's when, when we feel that expansion of what, even like being in love or seeing a beautiful sunset looks like, that connects us to like our core essence of who we are. And we incarnated to be just that. And I feel mm. that like love is this portal that brings us full circle back to who we are and then sharing that. And, and it's like that oneness because mm. we all, it's like we can't really quantify or describe it and we can kind of, but it's like this one experience we all feel that we all know what we're talking about, even if it happens like a little bit different for each one of us, mm -hmm. but it is that field in which we're all connected. Absolutely. Love is the answer now. What was the question? <laughs> uh, love is always the answer to the question. Okay, love is the answer now. What was the question? That's my favorite question. And with that being said, thank you so much for connecting. We'll have to, yeah, you, we'll have to connect in 3D since we're right down the road from one another. You know, we're, we do a lot of like epic things here uh, at the Mystic Manor, including retreats and workshops and events and you know filming uh i'm doing a new show called optimistic that's about to come out that's a late night style you know talk show slash variety show and yeah you'll have to come for a live taping or maybe even be a guest at some point oh, and when cool. we when we yeah, resume for taping awesome. yeah i love that yeah let me know keep me posted i shall yeah and all of you out there you can check out optimistic.tv to see um yeah all of it it's a, all about to be launched so super exciting and um with that being said uh, all of you out there, may you have a wonderful, magical now moment. Till next time, journey well. Love you all so, so much. And if you're feeling the call to come for a week retreat style mystic manner immersion, remember to go now and book your time to speak with me directly about stepping into the optimistic vortex at calendly.com forward slash talk with Brandon while there are still spots left. Otherwise, I look forward to co-creating magic with you at the Mystic Manor.